Thanks for tuning in to Coping with COVID-19, the daily video show and podcast from the journalists at Business in Vancouver. I'm Haley Wooden. My guest today says that July is the new January when it comes to goal setting and planning. Deborah Eckerling is a goal coach and the author of Your Goal Guide, a roadmap for setting, planning, and achieving your goals. Deb, thanks so much for coming on the show. Really happy to have you here. Oh, thanks for having me, Ailey. I'm very happy to continue to spread the word about what's coming might actually be good. (laughs) Yeah, tell me more about that, because I think there are a lot of people hoping for uh, maybe some good news or positive news. And I also have to imagine so many personal and professional goals were really disrupted by this pandemic we're still working through. Why now is the time to maybe get back on track and think about happy goals and happy things? Well, you have to think of it this way, you know, middle of the year, the first half of the year kind of for a lot of people was like, we just kind of threw our arms up and said, okay, fine, whatever. But July, the summer, uh, things are opening up and it is really the perfect time for people to say, okay, let's just kind of forget the first half of the year ever happened. and Let's just start from scratch and figure out what we want to do next and kind of look at this as an opportunity, okay, I get to start the year over. I mean, how often do you get to do that? Granted, you don't always want to do that, but if you have to, you might as well, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What would you say to people who are maybe still so focused on getting by day to day and they don't feel like they have the energy, the time, or even the resources to think a couple weeks in advance, let alone maybe a couple months or a couple years in advance? Why would you encourage them to maybe try to start doing that? Well, first of all, the self-care piece, I think that is essential. If you're not ready to jump into what's next, don't push yourself. Or maybe just like to spend an hour a week or even like 15 minutes a day every other day, just thinking, okay, when I see my life, because no one is seeing their life the same way, when I see my life in this new world, this new way of doing business, what does that look like? And what can I create for myself that helps others that will keep myself or keep me, my business moving forward, but also to help others, you know, get inspired. It it kind of goes back to when you figure out what you want, it kind of starts with the mission statement. Think about where you are, where you want to go, what you want to do, and and in what way that's going to help others. Because if you look at your future and how it's going to help, first of all, you're going to be more successful when you're not just focused on you, but also you can create really cool, awesome things. I mean, there's, there's a whole, I don't want to say this whole COVID thing, but this whole COVID thing is really caused people to step back and think, okay, I can't do business like this anymore. I mean, you're doing videos. I, my book came out in January and by March I was doing video workshops for you know, I jumped into the encouragement right away, but it's opportunities. So I get to reach a lot more people because of interviews via video, right? Opportunity to help more people. Think about what, first of all, you could think about your business. Maybe it needs to pivot. Maybe you need to start something new. Maybe you just need to find some sort of a side hustle, something that really gets you excited that you can do while you're waiting for whatever is your, I guess we call it the career, is to kind of settle out. And who knows, the side hustle could grow into something even bigger than your initial intention. But it really starts with giving yourself the time first to come up for air, then the time to think about, okay, what do I want? If the world was perfect, which it isn't, but if the world was perfect, I have this extra time. What can I create? that's going to make me happy, that's going to make others happy, that's going to help. It's really interesting, the self-care piece. So many people focus on it now, but I guess there's potential that this has really been an opportunity for people to think about their longer term and maybe have realized, you know, what I was doing before wasn't sustainable. The goals I wanted before weren't actually sustainable. Self-care is actually now going to be one of my goals. I, I always think in, in my book, I talk about the four career paths or the four paths and three are career oriented. And then the fourth one is the work-life balance piece. We've all been forced into work-life balance. And I love what you said just now. It's not just for now. It's not just for the last six months. Moving forward, 
look at your life and even if it's setting an appointment once a week so you maintain the self-care or working from home, it's been essential for people to say, okay, I know not many people do it, but they should. My cutoff time is dinner time and I'm not going to work in the evening. That's going to be family time or personal time. So keep the boundaries that you set, or if you haven't set them, set them now, from now into the future. Because granted, things are opening up, but it's not over. People are still uh, sheltering or what is it? Safer at home is what we have in California. And I'm pretty sure a lot of other states and countries are doing that as well. If you don't have to go out, you don't go out. Fine, you've got extra time, you don't commute, use it for self-care or to work on your passion project. Because, well, hopefully we won't ever have to etch a sketch in the middle of the year again. So take the opportunity to really think, okay, if I could do anything, what would it be? You've got the resources online to learn about the things you don't know. And you also have time for yourself to really think about what, what's possible and then create it. What guidance do you have for people who are maybe trying to embark on some goal planning, thinking about their future, but in a period of great uncertainty and in a period where we're really not sure what the next month is going to look at or how our whole world may change permanently over the next several years? How can we plan with confidence in a period where we maybe lack confidence about what's going to happen more globally? Well, I think the key is the confidence. Think about a month from now. What do you want to create in July? What do you want to create in August? And take it a month at a time. You can still look at your big picture goal, whether it's you want to be the CEO of a big company, you want to be a founder of your own thing, you want to write a book, you want to be an international bestseller. What is your long-term goal? And then what little piece of that can you accomplish this month and next month and the month after that? So Think of it in steps rather than leaps, because I do think things will get back to a more normal form of normal. But in the meantime, be good to yourself and think, what, what victory can I have in July? What victory can I have in August? And make baby steps that way. And when you look at your wins, it makes it easier to jump into the following month. So, okay, I want to write a book in July. I'm going to write the outline. In August, I'm going to write the first draft. Little things will add up to big things if you do them consistently. I know I suffer from the following, and I'm sure other people do as well, being a little too future-oriented, so you don't necessarily take time to celebrate the wins. You're already looking to the next. How important is taking a moment to reflect and look at what you've done to ultimately being successful with your goal? Oh, it's essential. When you set goals, even if they're little ones, you want to, first of all, put them where you see them every day, you know, put them on your computer or on your desk, or if you're a chef, you put them on your refrigerator, um, <laughs> whatever really works, a place that, that's your happy place that you look at very often. And then as you do the little things that work towards your goals, you want to be writing them down. So you can track them in a journal, you can track them on your calendar. That's really the easiest because everybody has their phone, their electronic calendar with them, like everywhere. When you do something, if you send out some pitches or if you send out your resume, whatever it is that you're doing, write down what you're doing. So at the end of the month, you're like, okay, I haven't gotten very far, but you can look at what you've done and say, oh, wow, I did much more than I thought I did. And those wins, that will give you motivation to keep going because you are doing something right. You are moving forward. In this vein, uh, if we're seeking support from others, how important, first of all, is having a support system in place? And secondly, how can we create a meaningful support system in kind of a stay at home or physically distancing world? Well, I think it's if you're not on the social networks, and I think pretty much everybody is, and if they're not, you know, when you're done watching this, you know, get a LinkedIn profile, uh, join Facebook, join Twitter, whichever uh, social platform is comfortable for you. Uh, but start with LinkedIn because that's really your best business-ish resource. 
but look at LinkedIn as a resource. It's not just about putting your resume out there. It's about putting the who you are and how you help others out there. So the people that you want to connect with, the like minds, can find you and you can find them. So I'd say start with, with your social and Facebook does have a lot of groups and maybe your chamber of commerce is doing Zoom meetups. Maybe it, there are a whole bunch in LA and I join plenty that I would normally go to because I don't have to leave my house. Uh, look at your bookstores, look at your libraries. Even though things are opening up, there's still hybrid uh, programming. Go to meetup, find your people and connect with them and look for opportunities to even if it's once a week to join a networking Zoom, or if not, have a dinner party and invite your friends or colleagues and just do it on Zoom and say what you're cooking so everybody's eating the same thing. There are a lot of ways to be creative, especially the people who are living on their own. We need the outside world to come into our home as well. So to take a look at what's comfortable for you, again, you don't want to cause yourself more stress. So look for opportunities. If what you want doesn't exist, then create them. Or even if it's something as simple as doing a coffee Zoom once a week with a different person, you're expanding your network, you're checking in with a friend, and believe me, as much as you like connecting with the other people, the friend's going to be happy to hear from you too. And just keep that going. Again, after all the craziness is over, keep these habits for moving forward because they're going to serve you well all the time, not just in COVID times. Any tips on keeping yourself accountable maybe when you're home alone and there's no one there who can see your goals and it's maybe a bit easier to hide your goals from other people if you want to? <laughs> well, deadlines are always good. I also, I have a variety of resources as well. I've got a Facebook group called Write Out Online and it's all about getting people to connect through conversations. What are your networking goals for the week? Uh, it's to your warm Thursday, what was your biggest win? It's a bunch of like-minded writers, creatives, and entrepreneurs. And anyone who's listening, please join and connect with me. You can always look to my The Dev Method Facebook page because I'm constantly putting videos. I have a Twitter chat and I'm very active on LinkedIn. So if you want to connect with me and I'll watch, oh my goodness, Deb's watching me. I have to do something. That could be your first start. If you're more comfortable trying to be a little more self-sufficient, just put deadlines on your calendar or just pick one thing that you're going to accomplish during the week and keep logging it. So Monday, say this week, I'm going to do these three things at the end of the week. Even if you do only two, it's still a win because two things that weren't done at the beginning of the week are accomplished at the end. Um, I like to call it like you want to create rules and rewards. So what rules are going to work for you, whether it's what I just said, write them down and check in or one networking event a week or do one dinner party a month. What do you need to do to accomplish your goals? Brainstorm this ginormous list and then you categorize it into which little goals make up the big goals and just slowly make progress. And you can do it. You have the power. And a lot of people have a little extra time. Some people have a lot extra time. Give it to yourself as a gift. Oh, great. I have this time. Growing up, I thought I had this one path. Well, all bets are off. Let me try something new. I can educate myself. I can make a plan and I can steadily work towards this great future. I didn't know I wanted until I gave my time, myself time to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Well said. You've outlined some great advice throughout this interview. So thank you for that. But I'm hoping in a couple minutes here as we wrap up the interview, can you summarize maybe some first few steps entrepreneurs or creatives or professionals can take or should take now if they're going to start resetting or restarting their goal planning for the year? Well, the first thing I think anyone can do, and it's super easy, is to start journaling. And I have this technique I call directed journaling, which basically you set 15 minutes over the course of a week, three, four times. And during that 15 minute appointment with yourself, just brainstorm. 
what you want, what you hope for your future, what goals you think would be attainable and what you want your life to be. So the idea is, it's the overarching, what are my goals? What is the life I want question? And you do this three, four, five times and don't look until after you've completed the process. Then what you can do is look at your, your ramblings and if you rather to hawk your journal, that's fine too, listen. But it's very powerful if it's written down because then you can see, oh, I mentioned this three times and I really thought that I wanted to be doing X, but I mentioned Y like 20 times. I had no idea that I really wanted to create this kind of business. So when you do the journaling, you're just kind of letting out everything out of your head onto the page and then you're looking at it so you can see what your next steps are. You have the answers. You just have to give yourself the opportunity and the time to figure out, okay, this is what interests me. Then you go into the research phase. Okay, if I want to do these three things, what's it going to take? And then you choose the one and then you can move forward. So that, that's basically the dev method is determine your mission, explore your options, brainstorm your path. But it's basically, what do I want? Why do I want it? What does it look like? And how do I create it? And then you just do it. That easy. Is it, I know. I, I say it like it's easy. And, and I talk about missions and mottos in my book and all the time. The motto, mine, is goal setting simplified. Because I figure fixing, changing, altering, seeking opportunities, that's going to take enough work. You shouldn't have to think to figure out the steps. And it really is easy. But the other thing to remember is these goals that you're setting, it's a gift to yourself. So give yourself the time to figure it out. Don't overthink your goals. Don't underthink your goals. Just say, this is good. I can do it and move forward. And it really is that simple. <laughs> Perfect. That's good to hear some positive news that I think we all need at this point in time. Where can people go to find out more either about the Deb Method or your book? Well, you can find me at thedevmethod.com and I'm at the Deb Method everywhere. You can look me up on LinkedIn, Deborah Eckerling, and then my site for writers, creatives, and entrepreneurs is at Write On Online. And you can find my book at your favorite bookstore. And if they don't have it, just order it. Perfect. Deb, thanks again for coming on the show with all of your insight. Really appreciate it. And thank you for allowing me to share the Deb Method and your goal guide with your viewers. It was great to meet you. Thank you. Nice meeting you too. That's Deborah Eckerling. She's a goal coach based in California and the author of Your Goal Guide, a roadmap for setting planning and achieving your goals. This is Coping with COVID-19. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with a new video and podcast.